Hey everybody, uh, this is a test. I have never done this one before, but um, I'm trying out um, being able to screen capture footage and actually talk about things at the same time. So what you're seeing is footage from the movie Unsane, which I saw just recently in the theater. Um, so this is a new movie. I'm going to go ahead and pause it when we get to a good spot here. We'll go ahead and pause it there for a second. So this is a new movie by the director uh, Steven Soderbergh. Most famously started out with things like Sex, Lies, Videotape. Of course, he's done the uh, the movies like the, um, well, Oceans 11, 12, 13, all that kind of stuff. And he's also known for doing some experimental stuff. Uh, just recently, he kind of, quote, retired. Uh, but even while he was retired, he did a made-for-HBO movie, I believe, uh, about Liberace behind the camp candelabra or in front of the candelabra. I can't remember the name exactly. And just recently, he kind of came back to movie ma making uh, for real uh, with uh, Lucky Logan. Or is it Logan Lucky? I can never remember. Which was kind of uh, the hillbilly country bumpkin version of uh, Ocean's Eleven. Anyway, this newest movie, Unsane, uh, is kind of a little more of a B-movie potboiler kind of movie for him. And uh, I guess I went into it knowing really nothing except for something about a woman and an insane asylum. Uh, the I guess the claim to fame to this movie is it was shot on an iPhone the entire movie. Um, you can definitely tell, and if you look at this shot I'm paused on right now, it's sometimes you get this real wide angle, really close look at the characters. Uh, there's a scene early on where uh, she's in a bar, and you can tell the camera's like sitting right on the bar, so every time she reaches for a cup, it's like right in your face, and then she's kind of in the background. Uh, it can be a little distracting, but also it does definitely add a level of kind of immediacy. You feel like you're right in these people's faces sometimes. And since there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, um, I guess, paranoia in this movie and uh, possible insanity, it kind of makes you feel like you're in this main woman's head. Uh, I think her name is Sawyer. Apparently she has played, um, and I, once again, I don't remember the name of the actress, but she's a, uh, in the crown right now I'm getting a lot of uh, acclaim and she's really good and she has to pretty much carry this movie on her shoulders and she does a great job um, pretty intense and she has to go back and forth between um, seeming very credible and then sometimes seeing seeming like maybe she's really crazy and that's kind of the crux of the movie uh, at this point there may be a few spoilers so if you're interested in um, Something that's kind of a combination of like One Flew Over's a Cuckoo's Nest meets a little bit of maybe like The Shining or Repulsion. Uh, not haunted as much, but definitely where you're not sure if reality is in the person's head or if you're actually seeing objective reality. I'm going to go ahead and let some of the video play here. The basic concept is early on this woman uh, is going in to get some counseling because she's been dealing with uh, kind of the after effects of having um, trauma from being feeling like she's being stalked, having a stalker. And she's moved to this new town, and she's still feeling like she's kind of being watched by these people. I'm going to go ahead and pause again. And part of being feeling like she's being watched, she um, goes and gets some counseling. And while she's there, you know, she everything seems really reasonable. They ask her a few questions. She talks a little bit about her past and, and feeling depressed and those kind of things. Uh, and they say, well, fill out the paperwork. And she's like, great, I'd like to come back again and talk to you. You're such a great listener. And what she does is she finds out that uh, as she fills out the paperwork, they take her into the back. And actually, this little shot here is them taking her to the back. And they take her in there. And slowly but surely, she finds out she's been involuntarily committed to this institution. And I don't want to really want to give away the rest of the plot, but it goes down some definite pot boiler B movie territory. I mean, there's some thriller elements, and there's definitely some elements of whether or not she is sane or insane, whether these things are really happening to her, 
whether someone's out to get her. She thinks that her stalker is out to get her, but if you think about it reasonably, you're wondering, could this really be happening? Uh, once again, I want you to kind of notice the uh, very straightforward uh, filming style, not glossy, very um, almost documentary style. And you can tell, like, see these wide angle shots, how she's kind of really in the scene. Uh, you feel like you're right there with her, and it makes it claustrophobic and very paranoid. Um, really a, a cool little thriller, uh, very tight little movie. Um, if you like that kind of movie that I talked about, like a repulsion, a um, little bit of cuckoo's nest in there, uh, definitely worth a watch. It's only 90 minutes, so it's not going to be a really long, drawn-out movie. It's going to kind of suck you in. Really a good movie for a, a video watch if you have a streaming service or it comes out in DVD, which all that stuff will probably happen pretty soon. You should be able to pick it up and, and check it out. So if you get a chance, take a watch of Unsane. And hopefully we're going to be able to use this technique to review movies in the future and possibly do some online uh, gaming or do some fun stuff online. So uh, hopefully you guys like this. Bye. Talk to you all later. Bye. Claire Foy, that's her name. It says it right on the preview there. I wasn't here for the whole video. But Andrew is here. Yeah, I know. All right, guys. Hope you enjoy it. Bye.